Now we're going to have some stories. Well, technically, the first isn't st a story, and it's something that I'm doing because I just think you all need to hear it. Um, back in the day, I used to do stand-up philosophy, which would be to take a very famous essay from philosophy and turn it into a performance piece. Um, and then, for reasons that are lost in history, I became very, very, very badly epileptic, and I forgot all the philosophy. <laughs> Which meant it was rather difficult to do. So I haven't done this in a long time, but I think we all need to hear it. It is from uh, uh, the, one of the great philosophers called, called Immanuel Kant. Um, you may have been a real percent. Um, very rarely stable. Uh, and he wrote one of the great works of Western philosophy called The Critique of Pure Reason. And I don't perform that. It's far too long and far too boring. But I do do one of his essays, which is called What is Happening Now? And it was his understanding of the Enlightenment and why it mattered. Um, and it's one of those things that haunts me in dark days. What is happening now? What is in the air? What is this enlightenment, a word on every man's lips. I, Immanuel Kant, will tell you the true secret of enlightenment. It is that mankind is at last, at long last, after all these ages, finally growing up. Finally to understand the world, not as he wants it to be, not as conspiracy theorists twist and bend it, not as idle fancy makes it, but learning to look at the world for what it is, learning to look at the truth for what it is, to let it take him wherever he goes, however much it hurts him. And it is so difficult to look at the world and to learn to think to think not as we want the world to be, but as it is. Not only is there all our own concerns and desires, but everywhere you see them. The masters of ritual, the lords of words, who says, don't think, don't think too hard. If you think too hard, you might be wrong. And isn't that terrible? Let us do the thinking. And so mix their honey with poisoned words and turn our minds to their power but to all these people we must learn to say no we will stand up we will think we will think about the world as it is as maths leads it as our understanding crafts it not as your foolish conspiracy makes it not as your empty words would twist it we will learn then to live in this world, to experiment with this world. And if we are wrong, so what? Others will look at our results and maybe, and will not laugh, but will honour our effort. And together, by experimentation, slowly, across the years, we will learn what truth is. For our enlightenment is not as some Buddha, we will not sit upon a tree and suddenly stand up and declare to all in sundry that we, we are enlightened. No. No, our enlightenment is a long, slow, hard, difficult process. For all the time, all the desires and the longings of our soul will scream at us and say, No, don't look at the world as it is, but as we want it to be. And together we must fight against them, learn to experiment, learn to think. Be proud also of our mistakes, our ability to change our mind, our ability to learn. For in them lies our true redemption. And yet, if we are going to be truly grown up about this, my friends, we are going to have to understand something about the truth of power. We must argue as much as we like we must endlessly debate but in the end we must also obey for what price a state that is caused driven by dissension what price a government that cannot decide what to do we must argue across the media across every means we can but in the end 
When the state says do it, we must. We must, in the words of that most enlightened leader, Frederick the Great, argue as much as you like, but in the end obey, because it is only obeying that you are truly free. For what price of freedom of action? My right to act is often enough my right to oppress you. No, my true freedom lies in thought. And yet if this feels too hard a burden, remember, no generation, nay, no decade, barely any year has the right to dictate the future. Obey now then, but always argue, re-argue, argue again for a different world, another chance, another possibility. Dare to hope to dream that the world must be different, my friends. Because it is in that hope, in that fight, in that ability to face the world for what it truly is, lies our only redemption. But be warned, however far we have gone, however much we might think that we are enlightened, that we are learning, we are always at danger. For one slip, and we will return to that long nightmare that was our childhood, where we refuse to think and allow others to do the thinking for us. Thank you. Now, I've changed that a bit, I'm afraid, but um, I partly updated it for Modern Debates, uh, but that was from... So he writes it as an essay competition. I don't think he wins uh, in about 1780. Um, so before the French Revolution... I think it's just before the French Revolution, but after the American Revolution, um, about what was happening in his day. 